the month. I uh, had a couple of uh, couple of uh, good arrests pertaining to crimes that took place in Garrison Beach. All right, last month we spoke about a burglary on Hazel Court. There were two burglars last month. All right, there was a um, burglary on Hazel Court. I believe about a week or so after the last month's meeting, an arrest was made on that one. Um, there was a witness in the neighborhood uh, who helped out on that case, and I believe they also got a, uh, a fingerprint. Well, they got a, uh, a print hit record, all right? The, the print was in the system because this guy's been arrested before. Uh, they put basically like a warrant out for him. He was stopped uh, jumping a turnstile in another part of Brooklyn. A right trained officer grabs him, you know, arrests him for that. Run him all of a sudden, he pops up and he's running on a burglary here in Garrison Beach. So he was charged with that. That case is closed. When I understand that, uh, the 106 precinct out in Queens, which is like the uh, Ozone Park, Howard Beach area, was also looking at him for, um, Similar crimes, burglaries over there. All right, he's, he's not from around here. He was actually uh, he was from the Brownsville area of Brooklyn. Uh, there was a robbery reported on July 5th, Garrison Avenue, neighbor to W. There were uh, a couple of arrests on that. Happened about one o'clock in the morning. Three males approached another male, punched him in the face, hit him on top of the head with an object, ripped his uh, gold chain from his neck. All right, uh, the male was not from around here. Actually, a couple of local. Uh, a couple of local teenagers were involved in that. Uh, two uh, two 18 year old uh, males were arrested in that, in that case. That was July 5th. Um, another burglary happened <clears throat> on July 29th, a couple of days ago, up on um, Garrison Avenue between W and Whitney. 11.30 in the morning, guy's home in his house. He hears some noise. Another, he sees uh, a male white kicking, basically breaking his front door down. All right? He doesn't know, I guess, this guy's home. Homeowner sees him, scares him away. He flees uh, down back into Garrison Beach here. The police arrive on the scene. They do a search of the area. He was picked up over here. Is he from here? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was arrested over on uh, Channel and Bevy. I believe, he's, I believe he's from Bevy. The right guy, like early 20s, mid 20s. Um, happy to report the uh, car break ins. Really don't see any this month at all. All right. Which is good. Hopefully the word's getting out. Don't leave valuables in your car. Uh, we had a couple months where there was uh, a lot of uh, reports made with that. If it's happening again, you know, we encourage people to make reports because I definitely don't see any reports for July about that. However, we have two um, stolen vehicle reports from the neighborhood which actually involve quads, believe it or not, all right? Um, one on uh, Frank Court and one on the 2500 block of Gerritsen, all right? One was a Honda, one was a Kawasaki. Take it from the backyard. You know, I know this is uh, the quad is a, always a hot topic here. If, if, if you own one, it's not illegal to own. If you have one, you know someone that has one, I would recommend locking them in the garage or using some kind of um, lock device. All right. Again, they're not illegal to have to own. They're illegal to operate on a city street or city park. Um, about all I have. Uh, the next police and community council meeting is scheduled for September 15th. All right, because of Jewish holidays, they're pushing it back a week. If anyone uh, would like to attend, everyone's invited. That's at 3093 Ocean Avenue. It was the second Wednesday of the month at 7.30. Precinct captain's there to answer questions. Um, I'm just going to let Officer Kefarrell speak real quick and I'll take questions. Just Hi, I'm Pia Kefarrell from 6-1. Um, I'm a crime prevention officer. Some of the things that I offer are free bicycle lunching. Okay, well, we put serial numbers on individual bikes. We, we record your serial number. So just in case it happens to be picked up somewhere or goes into our database system and we'll try to get back to you. That's one. Two, a big thing that we have is a lot of GLAs. Okay, we offer free vin etching at the precinct. Well, you gotta, I left my name my phone number. You guys should just call me, make an appointment. I usually take it the day or the next day after that. Uh, we put the VIN number on the outside of all the windows of your vehicle. That is an anti-theft device and your insurance company generally gives you between 5 and 10 percent of your insurance. Okay, it's free. If you were to go somewhere else, they usually charge you $150. Okay, some of the other things that we offer are iPod etching. Cell phone etching, which is very popular with the children. Okay, we do etching on uh, DS systems, Xbox. I've even etched uh, instruments. Anything of value. I've instrument. I, I've done a thousand dollar binoculars. We could vin etch almost anything. Okay. Um, any questions on that? You guys can always call my phone number. Uh, the other thing that we do is we do house surveys. Okay. Uh, to help you prevent burglaries, I'll come myself and I will do a survey of your home. I'll tell you what I think is going to help prevent burglaries in your home and what I've seen in the past in my experience and how we could prevent that from happening to you. Okay, that's 
It's private. It's between me and the Crime Prevention Bureau. That the information doesn't go anywhere else. Okay, that's also free. Um, it's very helpful. We do a lot of schools. We do a lot of churches. We do a lot of a lot of places to help prevent burglaries. Uh, if you want to do that, also you can just call my number. Usually, we'll come out to you that day, the next day. Anybody have any questions about the crime prevention stuff? That's done, right? Yeah. Oh, my friend is a cop, and he yeah. said that down here, he looked it up, that we don't have, um, <clears throat> we're not big on like the radar for like theft and stuff, because a lot of people down here don't. Yeah, but you know what? If you park your car somewhere else, right. that doesn't necessarily mean you're parking in a good neighborhood. Well, no, I'm just saying like a lot of people down here don't pull up if this tires the flesh or this or that, they just take care of it, so they need to pull so Absolutely. we could be put on the radar more so we can have more police officers down here. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. I say it every month at the meeting, and not only this meeting, every every community meeting. I mean, because uh, we can. Absolutely. Where bad things just keep on happening, you know, more and more, and then we open, nobody's calling up. If on it's them. not reported to us, chances are we're not going to know about it. And right. like you said, resources are sent where there's a problem, and if there's a problem, a particular problem here, whether it's, you know, ties being slashed, uh, cars being broken into, even, you know, for, for uh, you know, GPS systems or iPods or anything like that, if people don't make reports, we don't know about it. Right, you know and then we mean? don't get as much police officers as we need. Very good point, yeah. In reference to the two perpetrators that were caught, are they doing time now? Are they waiting for trial? Have they been released? I have to check on that. I don't know off the top of my head. All right, I can certainly find out. I'll relay the information to George. All right. Okay. Also.